Hi all, how's it going? So today I just wanted to show everybody how to access and download some very simple climate data from the NOAA website. So what I'll usually do is just type on my Google search engine uh, NOAA climate data and then it's this first one, climate data online. Um, so this is what it looks like. NOAA is the National Center for No. NOAA is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of the United States, um, and they deal a lot with uh, climate stuff. If you go down here um, and click on this orange box mapping tool, it's what I've been using recently. Maybe there are easier ways to find stations, but I just don't know them. And if I learn them, I can do another tutorial with the new skills I get. But this is the window that's going to pop up. And there's daily summary observations, monthly summary observations, and the other ones I haven't checked out yet. Don't really know how they work. Um, but between daily and monthly, um, I think it's a good idea to go with daily because sometimes uh, stations will not have monthly data because no one's calculated them yet. And maybe there's no automatic process to do that. But if you get the daily, you can just calculate monthly by taking the average um, of your daily data. And how this tool works is it ju just shows a map of all the stations according to the criteria that you use in this box to your left. And right now you can see there's only stations in the States, right? This is an American agency. Maybe they don't keep track of other countries' data. But if you go here on the left, you can see that the date is set for 2017. That's um, this week. And a lot of stations are not updated this frequently. So if you just go back in time, and uh, for me, what I've noticed is that 1987, um, April 7th, 1987, usually works quite well. And I'll just choose any um, uh, climate variable here because it doesn't really matter at this point. You're just trying to find stations. But I will switch it to degrees Celsius um, because honestly, America is the only country that uses Fahrenheit, right? Um, and then now you can see that other you, there's other stations in the world. Surprise. Um, so yeah, these are all the points. Uh, all the uh, climate station locations that have data for April 7th, 1987. And I did, I do find that this is not very accurate, this date thing, because um, you can set a date here and then a station will not show up, but then when you look at the station records, it will have data for that date that you chose. Um, so I just finished a report about Peru here, so I know they have really good data, but um, I'm just going to do this for the first time, too, and show you how, how I do it. Um, let's say you're doing a project or you want to find out, just out of curiosity, what has the temperature in, let's say, Saudi Arabia been like for the last, I don't know, 30 years, right? So you can just go there and zoom in a little bit. And you can see that these are the stations that Saudi Arabia has right there. And if you play around with the dates, maybe you might get more stations, maybe some will disappear, but let's just try it out. So let's do 1973, just pick a random date, update map. And so yeah, we lost some of the stations here. So for some reason, 1987, 1988 are, are good, good years. Um, I just stumbled upon it uh, by accident, actually. I was just trying it out for the first time for a different project. Um, so, okay, you can you notice that you can't really click on the stations, right? Um, and then you can go on this uh, map tools and then choose the identify tool. And then with the identify tool, you can click on those dots and see the name of the station, right? And then this is the temperature average for that date that you've chosen. And okay, this looks interesting. Um, I want to do a temperature in about central Saudi Arabia, right? So you can do view station details. So that station has had records from 1958 to 2017, and that's a pretty long, uh, long period of data. And then here it also shows uh, how much of the data 
has been filled. So you have 75% of the data from 1958 till 2017. But don't let that scare you away because it just might be that from 2010 to 2017, there's no records, but from 1960 to 2000, it's been pretty solid, right? And that's really all you need. And then if you want this, uh, you can just do add to cart. And then it will go up there. I was, I was playing with it a little bit earlier. That's why I have other things in my cart. And for some reason, no one makes it seem like you're buying stuff and it makes it seem like you have to pay for your data, but it's completely free, completely available to anybody who wants to look for data. And um, let's just see, right? Uh, now we want to see what the temperature in the coastal, coastal area has been like. So we choose this location. Um, again, we do view station details. 1978 to 2017, not too bad. You can add add to cart. Um, and then let's just check out the rest of the world, right? So some of you may be surprised, but there's actually quite a bit of stations, uh, climate data stations around the world. And if you're ever just curious, what has the temperature been like um, up here in Greenland for the last 30, 50 years, depending on how much data they have, you can just go there and see for yourselves. Um, even in places like Africa, it has quite a bit of stations, more than I thought there would be. I was actually surprised when I first saw this. Um, and usually they're around airports. Airports usually have climate, climate stations. Um, so if you go back here to the station, uh, what was it called, station details, and um, Let's say you went to your map, you got all the stations you were interested in looking at, and this is just a preliminary analysis, right? You have to get the data to look at it to see how good it is. Um, and then you go here, uh, click on your cart, and then they'll give you um, choices on how you want this data to be delivered. I will... Um, honestly, I only know how to work with CSV files, haven't tried a PDF or a text, but CSV, it's easy to use it in Excel or in R, so I'll go with that. And then here you can choose the range of your data. I think it's a good idea to go from the earliest to the last date that they have, and then you can um, cut it according to your own needs. And continue. And then here you can choose some of the things you want to add. Um, the units, they're standard, which I think it's American. I haven't tried it. I, I will often use metric because everyone else cares about Celsius. And then here you can choose what kind of data you want, precipitation, air temperature. Oftentimes the, precip the temperature data is more, um, there's more, there's less missing data in temperature than in precipitation. And then you just click here and continue. Here's a summary of the data you're requesting. And then down here you can just add your email address and then when you click submit order, you get an email like this saying your order has been submitted. And then you just have to wait. Um, I haven't had to wait more than two days for this. Um, yeah, you just wait for a one to two days. Sometimes you get it on the same day, but this I ordered this morning and it still hasn't arrived. And then you get another email saying your data has arrived. Maybe I can find one. Uh, to show you what it looks like. Um, so yeah, this is what it will look like when the order arrives. And then here's a file, you can just download it. It's not working for some reason. I tried this earlier and it wasn't working. Let me find another one. Maybe it expires after a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can... Um, what I've done previously is just click on that and then you get a CSV file with all the data that you've requested and then you can play around with it, see what years you actually have. Oftentimes the years they say they have, uh, it's just empty data with um, yeah, NA values instead of actual recorded values. Um, but yeah, I've been wanting to make this video for quite a while. There's a lot of public information that's readily accessible, but a lot of people just don't know how to get there. Um, I just learned how to do this on my own because I needed this data, and then I just 
uh, somebody told me that NOAA had data, so I just Googled for it. But if you're ever just curious about climate, um, climate data, you can just go here, do a quick search, find the data that you need. I mean, just play around with it, you know. Um, I do want to do some more tutorials in the future for anybody who's interested in climate, uh, climate change and climate data analysis. Um, I have some ideas that I'll start putting out, but um, honestly, I just wanted to do this for anybody who's interested in this stuff and uh, wants to know what kind of information you can get on the internet. Um, but yeah, that's it for for now. Thank you everybody for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Please let me know if you have any ideas of things you want to learn, any skills in climate data analysis, climate change, um, climate change adaptation stuff you want to learn about. I am a grad student in Canada studying climate change impact assessment and I just hope to share all this knowledge with everybody out there and all y'all who are interested. Thank you so much for joining me. See you on the next one.